We're good. All right. The chair notes the time is 6.02. Uh, I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. We'll begin with the roll call of the ZBA members. Uh, Steve Judge is present. Mr. Craig Meadows. Present. Mr. Philip White. Present. Mr. David Sloviter. Present. And Ms. Rizwana Khan. Let me just see if she's here. She is, okay. She's in the attendees room. I'm gonna promote her to panelist. All right. She is here. Ms. Khan, we're gonna mark you as present, correct? She's coming in. There it is, okay. Well. It takes a minute. There we go. Okay. All right, um, we'll wait for her verbal agreement to that at a later point. Jacinta, are you gonna record? It is recording, yes. Oh, it is? Oh, I see it. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, uh, quorum is present. I also wanna note, um, attending this meeting is Ms. Christine Brestrup, Town Planning Director, Jacinta Williams, Planner, and Mr. Um, I wasn't, <laughs> give me the name of the person from uh, Inspection. Dave Cody. Dave, Dave Cody. Cody from Inspection Services. All right. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to serve, wish to observe the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. In accordance with, this, with the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40A, and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties of interest. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff, and they may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and ZBA webpage. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen or by pressing nine on their phone. The chair with the assistance of the staff will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board has enough, feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of hearing to file for a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of, fi of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed with the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20 day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in Superior Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, first order of business is approval of minutes from August 22nd, 2024, a public hearing on ZBA FY 2023-18, ASD Shootsbury MA Solar LLC. Request for a special permit under section 3.340 of the zoning bylaw to construct a 9.35 megawatt four point, uh, direct current, 4.4 .4 megawatt alternating current ground mounted solar voltaic array spanning 41 acres on a 102 acre site with accompanying battery storage system at three parcels of land owned by W.D. Cowles Company, identified as map 9B parcels 11 and 12, map nine, 
parcels 27 on Shootsbury Road, RO Outlying Residence Zoning District. Frontage and access to the subject parcels of land are located between 187 and 201 Shootsbury Road, continued from, January, from July 25th, 2024. A public meeting on ZBFY 2025-06, Clark House, 22 Lessee Street, in accordance with condition number one of the 1979 comprehensive permit Site architectural and landscaping plans, including design of any signs and lighting, shall be submitted to and approved by the boards of appeals before the construction of any building shall commence. Review of the proposed plan for three additional parking spaces for the property located at 22 Lessee Street, Map 14A, Partial 63, RG, General Residence Zoning Districts. ZBA FY 2020-05, Mission Cantina, 485 West Street. In accordance, with, in accordance with conditions number 13 of the 2011, 2012, and 2015, any change in the ownership of this business requires an updated management plan, and that said plan be reviewed by the Amazonian Board of Appeals at a public meeting. Review of the new management plan for property located at 485 West Street, Map 19D, Parcel 9, BBC Village, business, Village Center Business Zoning Districts. Following that is a general public comment period on, for matters uh, not before the board tonight and other business not anticipated within 48 hours and adjournment. The first order of business is consideration of the minutes from our August 22nd meeting. Has everybody had a chance, has members of the board had a chance to review those minutes and you want to make any changes? I thought they were fine. I thought they were good. I entertain a motion to approve the minutes from August 22nd. So moved. So moved. Been moved and is that a second as well over there mr meadows yes moved and seconded any discussion no discussion um the vote occurs on the motion chair votes aye mr meadows aye mr slobiter aye mr white aye miss khan uh you're muted yes aye hi um you do vote to approve the minutes in your initial vote as a member of the ZBA? Yes. All right. Well, okay, welcome, thank you. Welcome to the, the ZBA meeting. Thank you very much. Thank All you. Right. The next order of business is, um, let me just get the exact, oh. next order of business is ZBA FY 2023-18 ASD Shootsbury MA Solar LLC. We only have three impaneled members uh, for this special permit application tonight, so we can't proceed with the hearing on this matter. Um, it's just Mr. Meadows, Mr. Sloboda, and myself that are impaneled for this, so we don't have a quorum. Um, and uh, we also have a request from the applicant that we continue this matter. So since we can't um, deal with it at all, I would entertain a motion to continue this matter until November 14th at 6 o'clock. Can you guys do, let's see if we can do that. Craig, is that gonna be a good time for you? Uh, I'm, I'm checking. Yep. We, yeah, we already have a meeting scheduled that night. So yeah. yeah, 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 it's fine for me. Let's give Craig a chance here to take a look it, at it, it. It's, I have to be in California the week before, but that's that the 14th is good. Good, okay. So, um, I'd entertain a move. I move that we continue this application until November 14th at six o'clock. Is there a second? Second. Um, Wait a minute. You say, <laughs> yeah, so moved. Yeah, well, I, I moved it and you seconded it. I, oh, I, I didn't realize you were. I, yeah. I <laughs> just so want moved. to simplify it because it's just three of us on this one. So, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's no discussion. The vote occurs. The chair votes aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Sloboder? Aye. All right, motion passes. The next order of business tonight is a public meeting on two items on the agenda. Uh, Associate Member Khan will serve on the panel along with myself, Mr. Sloboder, Mr. Meadows, and Mr. White. ZBA FY 2025-06 Clark House, 22 Lessee Street, in accordance with condition one of the 1979 comprehensive plan, uh, requires a review of the proposed plan for three additional parking spaces 
for the proper property located at 22 Leslie Street, map 14A, parcel 63 RG, general residence zoning districts. Um, I want to go over the, the site, site visit first. We had a site visit on Tuesday. All the uh, members of the, of the panel attended it along with staff. Uh, we reviewed, we looked at the uh, place where the uh, parking is currently located, the graveled uh, area of parking. We tried to assess from the drawings and the submissions where the property line was. It was, a, uh, we didn't determine exactly where that is. Um, we looked at the, um, the turnaround. Uh, and that was pretty much the extent of our, um, our site visit. I don't think there's anything else to add, um, Mr. Meadows or Mr. Slobiter or Ms. Khan. Well, except that we did ask for a site survey. Right. So that it could be determined if the requested parking was going to be on the Clark House property or somewhere else. Yes. And yeah, that's exactly right. We did ask for that at the, uh, at the site visit. Uh, and we also have submissions for this. Uh, submissions include a project summary from the staff, um, the, all the board, all the previous ZBA um, actions and orders on the property. We have a, a Clark House plan. Um, I'm not sure quite how to identify it other than it's um it's said it's by it's from peabody properties um the submission was dated august 22nd 2024 and it's a drawing of the drawing of the clark house properties um it looks like from seven from july 27th 1979 by clark and madden um, and the massachusetts housing finance agency we also have uh, two communications from the uh, fire department. The first details the um, requirements that they need for their um, for their equipment, and the second requests um, that they uh, stamp plans showing how the uh, ladder truck and other items would be able to move through the turnaround in the spot on the property. Those are the submissions. We don't have any public comments or anything else, do we, Jacinta? Miss Williams, I mean. No, we don't. Okay, I think that's it. Um, Miss uh, Miss Gideon, you there representing the uh, applicant? Yes. All right. Can you just give us your name and address for the record, please? It's Donna Sue Gideon. You need my home address or my. Clark your work Clark. address is your work address is fine. Okay, it's 22 Lessie Street in Amherst. Great. And maybe you could just tell us brief, very briefly um, what you are requesting and why. Uh, well, we're requesting to have three additional parking spaces approved on the parking lot. Um, this is all new to me, so I don't really know anything about zoning laws. Um, but the property only has about half the number of parking spaces as it does apartments. So we rarely ever have an available parking spot um, for staff to use. And so the three parking spots are for staff parking primarily, but they're also there as um, we need emergency parking. Like we have um, emergency maintenance coming on site during the weekends or where we're not there that they need to be able to come in quickly and get to an apartment for an emergency. They need to have a place where they can park without having to go find meter parking somewhere, especially certain times of the year. It could be very busy for that. Um, we also use that for if we have vendors coming and they have to carry equipment onto the, into the building that uh, they need a close area so we can give up space for them um, and I understand that emergency vehicles also use that space from time to time if they're parked outside the building nobody can get around them um, sometimes they're there for a while and so I understand like they will sometimes park in that area also so there's definitely a, a major need to have the space for the parking thank you so as Mr. Meadows said one of the things that we looked at was the uh, drawings 
that were, I guess, of 1979 drawings. Mm -hmm. and the, the concern are two, is twofold. Number one, we don't, it's not clear from those drawings um, where the park, how the parking spaces line up with your property, right? We don't know yep. where the property line is. Those parking spaces are kind of filled in. They're not, um, there's not a survey done. To, and there's no way to judge whether those, whether the current uh, 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 layout of the turnaround is accurately represented on the drawing. And if it is or isn't, how, is it sufficient for the uh, fire trucks to get through? And, I, and it seems to me that the only way that we can make it, we have to make a decision as to whether you can amend the current comprehensive plan by adding those three parking spaces. The only way that we can make that determination is if we have sufficient information to judge what your property is, where your property line is and where those parking spaces are on your property. And two, whether after those parking spaces are there, whether the emergency vehicles can get around safely and uh, do what they have to do in the case of an emergency. And that all seems to me to require that you need to have a, a, a survey of at least that section, which would include the turnaround and the parts of your property up to the property, up to and including the property along the place where the uh, current um, park, your, your gravel parking spaces currently exist, the ones that we, that we observed. And I think that this, the staff needs that to look at it, and we need that kind of information before we can uh, approve a change in the comprehensive plan. Absent that, if you if, if that's not done, those it seems to me that those parking spaces that you've set up or that have been set up, not you personally, but that have been set right. up on that property, are not in compliance with the comprehensive permit. And you'd have to return those parking spaces to grass as they are in the in the comprehensive permit. So in order to achieve what you've asked this board to permit, you've made a case that you need those parking spaces or more parking spaces, we've got to see what, what the prop, where the property is, where the parking spaces are, and how the fire trucks are going to get around there. And the only way to do that is with the survey, it seems to me. Um, go ahead. So with the, as far as the fire trucks getting around, like those spaces, as you saw them, like they, they don't come out into the driveway area any at all. So they, the fire trucks still can go around there and they do. They just will sometimes park in front of the building, but when they leave, their only way out is to go around that driveway. So they're, they're able to get around the driveway. All the emergency vehicles are able to get around the driveway. It's just that when they're parked in the driveway area, they're blocking other people. Um, but I, but that area doesn't come out into the driveway area at all any more than it, than it did before there were spaces. As, as far as the survey goes and the, I just, my concern is I'm not sure why, like I don't have an original kind of blueprint site plan. I think if I were going to request one, I would request it from the city and I, I'm not sure. I, I guess I would assume that the city would have something like that. I think there's two points here and then I'll ask the planning staff to respond to the city question, but. The first one is the, we don't know if the current, if, if, if the current parking spaces are on your property or not, you may be impo imp impinging on the property next door, number one, and it can only be determined through a survey. And number two, the fire department has said, we need a stamped, um, a stamped, survey that shows that this that there's sufficient circumference to for the trucks to get around and we, that's really what we have to operate off of it's most important um so i think you need to my opinion and i'll let other people on this matter speak my opinion is if you want to have those additional parking spaces which are new to the comprehensive permit you've got to show us that they're on your property and they're they're not going to interfere with the uh, fire trucks um mr meadows uh, I, I was going to, obviously the fire department, according to my interpretation, is asking for that survey, that work to be done. Yeah. It's not a matter of, 
how you feel about it is just something that has to be done in order to satisfy the fire department and their um, routine submissions. Secondly, I, I'm curious, and I don't know the, the area to the north of the building that would be the southern end of the Clark House, uh, of the Kellogg House um, parking area. Is that, you might wanna check and see if that could be used for, and I know it, it, it you've got a little driveway into the back of the uh, back of the building. I know because I used to bring mm -hmm. things in and out of there for my mother. Yeah. So that area has got enough uh, of a, it would seem to be a logical place to put your, your parking for your delivery trucks and for your others instead of using the area in front of the building. And I, I just a suggestion that you might look at that and it may get around all of the other issues that you've got. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I as I stated, there's multiple reasons why we want to have the parking spots. It's not only just for the vendors that come and we then they do park there, some of them. Um, the And I, those spots have been there for my understanding a year or more. So I know that the fire department can fit there. I'm, I guess I'm, and again, like I'm not, I'm not used to how these things work with the city. Um, so like in my mind, like, of course they know they can fit there because they've done it. <laughs> but if that is, so is that something that they want? Like, no matter what we do with these, we still have to yes. do, like, I have to do the survey or I have to do the survey if I want to keep the parking spots. Well, you certainly have to do the survey if you want to get the parking spots. And it looks like the, the um, fire department, and I would talk with Ms. Brestrup and, and Ms. Williams as well, but it looks like the fire department would wishes you to make sure that the, that the current layout comports with their uh, requirements. And so that would, you'd need to have it uh, surveyed. But I, so my, my question is so, if, if it turned out that we weren't going to keep those parking spots and we put them back to grass, does the fire department still require us to do a survey? I, you're going to have to ask the fire department about that. It looks to me that um, I'm trying to read through the okay. fire departments. Because this is, this is the first I'm hearing anything about the fire department or them having any requests, so I don't know anything about that part. It's road and closing analysis and evaluation of fire apparatus maneuvers through the so I, so I guess it's a quite that's a question that I can't answer at this point that you're going to we're going to need to talk to um, Ms. Brestrup. She has her hand up and Mr. Um, Mr. Um, um, well, I, I guess Ms. Brestrup can answer. Chris. Yeah, I think that if um, am I. Yep, you're on. Yeah. So um, I believe that if you're not changing anything and you're just leaving everything the way it was previously before those gravel spots were added, then you do not need to have the turning uh, movement analysis done for the fire department. What they're concerned about is that those spots might stick out into the driveway. If you, if you were to pull those spots back to within your property, in other words, we don't know where the property line is. So you may have maybe parking up over the property line. So once you pull them back, you know, to me be within the property, they may be sticking out into the driveway. Um, the other thing is if they're there in that location, the the fire truck has kind of uh, things that swing around beyond their wheelbase and it could hit those cars. So if you want to put cars there, then you need to prove to the fire department that the fire trucks can maneuver there and that those cars can be parked within your property. But if you don't want to have those cars there, those new cars there, then I think the fire department will not need a turning uh, movement study. Because it's already laid out in the comprehensive permit that was previously approved. That's right? correct, yes. 
So is a turning movement study the same thing as a survey? The swept path, what the fire department is asking for, and this is a term of art, fire apparatus access plans shall bear, oh wait, excuse me, they want an access road created by swept path analysis and turn simulation software. So they want you to prove to them that their truck can adequately get around that curve with those new parking spaces on your property. And that is a, a um, process or a, an analysis that's done by an engineer. Engineers have this type of uh, software that can perform that analysis. And we often see that for planning board uh, applications as well as zoning board applications. They submit a separate plan showing how their fire truck comes around. If, but if you're gonna leave everything as it was before those gravel spaces were installed, that was a plan that was approved many years ago by the Zoning Board of Appeals. So you can leave that there, but that would mean taking those gravel spaces out. So it's sort of a choice that you have to make or your company has to make as to if you want the spaces, then you need that swept path analysis and simulation software, turning simulation software, and you need a survey. But if you don't want to have those spaces there, then you don't need that. Okay, so just to recap, it's called a swept path analysis and a simulation software. A turn simulation. Um, did Miss Williams provide you with the email that came from the fire department? I don't I forwarded it around 540 because it came in a little late for us as well, Donna Sue. So uh, it was sent to you, but you may not have seen it before the meeting started. Yeah, I left early from work so I could get here in time to get on with you guys. So I need we'll look for that tomorrow. So is so that's clear of like exactly that'll, that'll explain it. And then you said that's done by an engineer. We would also need to do a site survey with a site surveyor. Yes. Two things. If you want to keep the parking spaces there, you have to prove that, that you're on your prop, you're on your property just with the, uh, okay. And I, and, and I'm sorry to keep bringing this up. I, I guess I'm just, I don't understand why the city doesn't have something that shows what our property line is. Like if don't. I needed to know, I, I would go to the city, I would think. Oh. No, Ms. Brest, perhaps you can help I explain yeah. that. But the city doesn't, doesn't provide the stamped survey. If you wanna have a certified property line, you get a surveyor to do that. It's not done by the city, but please um, enlighten me if I'm wrong, Ms. Brest. No, I was just going to point out that there may have been a survey. There probably was back in the 1970s, um, but we don't have access to that right now. Um, some engineer who worked for your company or the previous owner in the past may have that, or that it's possible that it could be on the registry website, Hampshire County Registry of Deeds. There may be something there, but we don't have access to a survey of your property at this time. So your um, option is to hire a surveyor. And sometimes engineers and surveyors work together. So you might find a firm that can do both the survey of that little area and also the swift path analysis and turn simulation. Okay. Um, so is there a, any possibility of getting any of this in writing from you guys? Because if I'm going to go to the owners of my property, they're going to want to see something more official than me just saying we need this. So Donna Sue, I actually sent them an email this morning as well, I, requesting I, that. They, um, they forwarded that to me. Okay. Well, my, so my comp, the company that I work for were the management company. Okay. Um, so I, I did see that, but I don't think that anybody at Peabody, honestly, I don't think anybody at the owners has that stuff either. It's from so long ago and, and there's been multiple owners. <laughs> Ms. Gideon, here's what I'm going to suggest, is that you give Ms. Williams a call tomorrow, work out exactly what you need between the two of you to inform your owners what information you think they need. And is, she, is Ms. Williams? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. You call her tomorrow, okay. get the information that you, that, that you think you need, and proceed that way. And that would... Okay. okay. That's, that's the only way this is going to work. We're not going to be able to litigate this here on the, on the meeting tonight, so... No, I know, but I was not, and I'm not trying to be difficult. I just again, not being difficult. It's just I, you're, you can get the best information from Miss Williams and she and or Miss Prestrup, and they can um, provide you with what you need to give to 
your owners. Okay, so Jacinta, is your phone number on the emails that you've been sending me? Um, it's not, but I will. I have your number, and I can give you a call. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I'm pretty available tomorrow. Okay. So, Mr. all right, Mr. White, you had your hand up for a long time, and I want to give you a chance to ask the question if you had it. Still have it. Um. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say to the applicant, yeah, I think my concern is the same as the rest of the boards looking at the, you know, blueprint that we've been provided. I did some quick Googling, um, according to Travelers Insurance, which they would collect that on this, the average length of a pickup truck manufactured and sold in the United States, obviously there's a huge variation, uh, is between 18 and 19 feet, uh, depending on cab length and, you know, a bunch of different variables. But with the dimensions we were given of 18 feet long, 25 and a half feet. No, that's not 25. Anyway, yeah, 25 and a half feet wide for the three parking spots. That's why, I mean, I would absolutely need the surveys because when we're looking at the roundabout where the fire trucks would go around, there is a portion of this, it looks to be about three feet in this drawing that's showing it as a parking spot, but it's actually the route that people would get around. So that's why I would need a survey. Um, to kind of make any decision on this, but it's a rather long-winded way to say I agree. Yeah. yeah. So I think I, I think we've got consensus amongst the board that we need the information, or you need to not you need to decide that you don't want those parking spaces and maybe follow Mr. Meadows' suggestion of exploring in some other place. But if we're going to, you're asking us to approve it, we need the, we need further information. So um, I, Miss. Restra, do we have to vote to continue this to a date certain as a public meeting, or we can schedule this without a, a vote on a, we can continue this without a vote to a date certain, correct? You can continue it without a vote because it's not a public hearing. Correct. All right. So um, I would entertain a motion to continue this matter uh, until when the, the applicant comes back and says that they either have uh, more information to provide us, or they've made a decision to uh, amend it, amend the conference permit for, to provide parking in another place. I second it. Well, then I'll move it. <laughs> okay, it's, it's been moved and seconded. <laughs> Is there any discussion on the motion? No discussion. Uh, the chair votes aye. The vote occurs on the motion. The chair votes aye. Ms. Ro Ms. Khan? I think that's an eye. Put your thumb up if you think. It... Okay, we'll come back to Ms. Khan. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Ms. Khan, you're muted. Just give me a thumbs up. All right, we got five votes for it. Uh, all right, Ms. Gideon, um, work with the staff and we'll try to, they'll do the best they can to help you out, okay? Okay, hey, thank you. I can just, yeah. Don, I can, I can leave yeah 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 all right just since i'll talk to you tomorrow yeah bye thanks okay i now i can say i <laughs> there we go all right you're officially recording this as, as i okay all right thank you <laughs> all right the next order of business is fy zba fy 2020-05 mission cantina 485 west street in accordance with conditions number 13 of several uh, special permits, including 2011, 2012, and 2015, any change of this ownership requires an updated management plan, and that said plan be reviewed by the Amazon and Board of Appeals at a public meeting. Um, submissions we have from the new owner of the property, excuse me, um, a new management plan with amendments to the management plan, which essentially um, change the remove a smoker and then removes a food truck is in essence what the submissions are. There's no other submissions from the town. Uh, is there anything else that I've missed in that, Ms. Breshtup or Ms. Williams? No, that's it. Okay. Who's representing the applicant? Can we bring those folks in? Bill is here and Dave is here. Great. Um, Bill K, are you the uh, person who's going to present for the uh, for your, your team? Yeah, I'm here with uh, my business partner and co-owner Walter Pacheco. Okay, um, just give us your name and address 
for my, the name, uh, my official name is William Kitsilis. Um, my address is 25 Channing Avenue, Providence, Rhode Island. All right, please proceed. So um, I want to thank the uh, committee, uh, Mr. Chair, for hearing us today and get us and the staff for getting us on short notice. Um, we, we missed this in our diligence. Um, we were aware of the restrictions. We just um, just missed it asking for this um, hearing. And I appreciate the staff for scrambling it. And I, and I assure you that a third grader did not fill out the application. That's just my terrible handwriting. If I had time, I would have typed it up. So um, I, I apologize for the presentation, but we were at a closing table scrambling to get this in. So um, thanks, thanks and bear with us. With that said, um, we are taking over, we took over the Mission Cantina, both locations, one in Amherst and the one in East Hampton doesn't, doesn't affect this governing body, but just wanted to point out, um, Walter and I, um, Walter owns a, is a long-term operator of um, Antonio's Pizza, Amherst. Uh, I think he's worked there, Walter worked for almost 25 years on and off over the years and has overseen that location. So he's kind of a pillar and a well-known person in the community. And he kind of kept an eye on this location and he really liked the product. And we thought it was a great opportunity when we heard that the prior owners were looking to exit the business and do something different. Um, we operate two restaurants with full liquor licenses in Belchertown, Antonio's Pizza Belchertown and the Grapevine Grill. And we've um, love Western Mass. We love Amherst. We love the community out there. And we're excited about taking um, what we think is a good concept and hopefully over time making it better. So with that said, um, you know, Walter and I, between the two of us own and operate over 10 different restaurants. So we are very familiar with kind of the ins and outs and intricacies of what's needed to run um, a clean, safe and professional um, establishment. Um, and, you know, as you can see from the answers, a lot of this stuff is in place, but we tend to actually do a little bit more than what we're presenting here, just in terms of our diligence and stay on top of it. So, you know, we have a tra trash folks in place. Um, we have the, we happen to own, we bought the property as well. So we were in charge of the landscape. We have a landscape team. We also have other landscaper if there's issues. All the lighting is um, existing and we feel sufficient prior to the, with in, in coherence with the prior um, ZBA decisions. Um, and that we're not changing any of the signage right now. Um, we have pest control there. And so kind of everything's the same. The menu is exactly the same. So I don't really have much to use. The two bigger things is we just wanted to clarify, we did remove the smoker um, and we did, and I guess the prior tenants, we didn't even know um, we're using a food truck. So that's not there as well. So I thought it was important to just kind of note that, that kind of change um, and, and the lack for a need for that, just to <laughs> a burden um, use on the property. So with that said, I'm happy to take any questions and, and, and answer any, and, tr and answer them the best that we can. So our, our responsibility is, is really just to um, view any changes in the management plan and the, under the change of ownership and that, um, and that you've identified the two changes, which is the, Smoker, which was approved in a subsequent uh, special permit, and the and the food truck, and you understand that if you're going to make future changes that are that are um, conditioned in a special permit, you've got to come back to us and yep. and you know that. So as a longtime business operator in Amherst, so I I have no I have no questions about uh, what you're proposing, and I'd open it up to any other board member who may or may have a question. Mr. Slogan. Well, I just I just want to clarify one thing so that I can be completely clear. Other than removing a smoker, which was approved, but we can't require you to keep. We can't tell you you have to have a smoker. And a food truck, which you're removing, because we can't, nor do we care to ask you that. You're making no other changes to the operation, to outdoor seating, parking, up. Uh, it's the same operation under new ownership. That's it. That's it. Yep. Thank you. We, we we do have plans in the future, and we've engaged an architect to to fix the facade and clean the place up. And but that will be probably six months, eight months from now, and that will go through a full 
process. I'm only telling you that because we're excited about that change. We think we think the property is a little tired and we want to make it better and more appealing. So when that happens, we're going to go through all the proper channels. We'll hire the right experts and professionals to make sure that, um, you know, we're, we're doing everything right. We're, we don't, we, we, we don't, you know, we have a saying, break the rules, the rules break you. So we're going to stick to that and right. we'll make, follow the rules. But, but until you get to that point, I wouldn't know the difference if I walked into Mission Cantina next week from the previous owner, I, nothing is different. Nothing. And the, that, and the, um, margaritas will be just as good yeah we're lucky enough that uh Kristen's staying on the, the bar okay um and the whole staff staying on and we also have the added advantage that many of those uh team members in mission cantina have worked um for us antonio's over the years so they were so we have a good relationship we're not looking to change anything we think the food's fantastic we think the drinks are fantastic um we're just we're honestly looking to learn and then, you know, things that we think we could do better over time we'll do operationally, but you know, one is the, it's a tired looking building. You know, we made our other tenant Sibby's remove an outdoor cooler that was just out there broken. So we don't, we don't operate that way. So hopefully you'll see just kind of a, an aesthetic beautification of the property over time. All right. Well, if it, if the, um, if the, um, margaritas go downhill you'll have to come back before the committee yeah. and get permission to be serving an inferior margarita we will uh okay thank you us. thanks <laughs> any other questions all right i entertain a motion to approve the management change so moved is there a second second it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion to approve the management plan change? If not, the chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. And Ms. Khan was impaneled for this, but it looks <laughs> like she's off. She's left. So the vote is four to zero to one, uh, one not voting. The motion passes. And I would just say that you Please keep the mole sauce. That's really good. The mole, is, the mole is wonderful. I know it's a lot of work, but I love that mole that they that they have for the chicken mole. We we do too. Trust me, we're not we're not changing anything. That's that's good stuff. All right, thank you and good luck. Appreciate it. Come in soon. If we must. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the next order of business is uh, public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. I see no, I see five people, but no hands up. I see nobody, I see no public comment at this point. That's correct. All right, next order of business is um, new business, uh, anything not anticipated within the last 48 hours. And Ms. Williams, I think it'd be helpful if we just run through the next two meetings that we have. Sure, okay. <clears throat> All right, so the next meeting that we have is next week with Wayfinders. Um, I know that one of our core members for that panel will be out. Mr. Henry will be out that week, um, but that should be fine. That'll be his one that he can miss. And I believe we have requested from the applicant any presentation materials or any you know updates that they have to be sent to us so that we can include them in the application or in the meeting packet. So we're waiting to hear from them. And then after the 19th, we have a regular ZBA meeting on the 26th. And I currently do not have any applications coming forward for that meeting. So that could potentially be another Wayfinders meeting, which is the plan to kind of help move things along with the comp permit. If we ever find ourselves with a meeting date where we don't have applications um, to just Kind of keep the ball rolling with wayfinders that's what the next two weeks looks like and miss williams i i know what's i misplaced my um little schedule what's the topic for next week for wayfinders is it <clears throat> site physical site or is it um, architecture and can you... so the topics for next week would entail 
uh, site design, landscaping and screening, lighting and parking, architecture, mechanical systems, possibly stormwater management, if we can get to all of it, stormwater infrastructure and design, um, and as well as basically just property management, income restrictions, financials, and the applicant selection process and the discussion of local preference. So that's a lot. Yeah, um, I, I, <laughs> but, I, I think it's just, I, 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 I think we can only realistically anticipate a couple of the first three or four of those items. That's yeah. perfectly understandable. So um, if we don't get to it on the 19th, I think there's always the 26th as well. Yeah, well, that's, we got a lot there. All right. Um, and perhaps it'd be a good idea to uh, circulate the, the uh, this pared down agenda of items for the uh, for the board and for the applicant before the meeting starts. Sure, so I will do that. Sometime next, early next week. I, or during next week, because it's two weeks away. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, any comments, questions from members of the board or Ms. Brestrup? Do you have anything you wish to add or Ms. Williams? I don't have anything, thank you. All right. I don't have anything either, thank you. Okay. Well, I'm, I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn unless somebody has more to say. It's all moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. This is not debatable. The no, the it is not. <laughs> the vote occurs on the, vote, on the motion. Mr. White, the chair votes aye. Mr. White. Aye. <laughs> Mr. Meadows. Aye. Mr. Sloviter. Aye. It, the vote is four to nothing with uh, one not voting. The motion carries. We're it done. Feel, six... It feels like early parole. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what to do with myself for the rest of the afternoon. You know, what the... you have an <laughs> evening that you didn't know what you had. You... Enjoy it. Take, yeah. take advantage of it. Had I known, I didn't need to snort down dinner at 20 of 6. <laughs> well, so, there I you are. You Live and learn. Have... Live and learn. Well, enjoy, yeah. enjoy it. If you okay. hadn't, it would probably have gone to 10 o'clock. Yes, <laughs> right. That's for sure. That's for All sure. Right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good night, Good night, night all. Good night. All right. Good night.